Magic and magical people. The unnatural order is all around you. Most mortals ignore the obvious signs, trying to hide behind rationality and science. We exist within rationality and science, just at a level you haven't reached yet. I am Gabriella, and this is a story of my champion, Harry Strange. Are we going in there? This is where the tracks lead, and we need to stay somewhere safe for the night. This is the Catholic Abbey. It's been here for centuries. Maybe they can help us. Um, doubtful. Ew! Is that a body over there? What? Where? It looks more like half a body. Over there, hanging outside of the gazebo between those two trees. Look at the front door. Gods, it's been knocked off its hinges. This is... was... A solid oak door. They don't just fall. What do you think is in there? Nothing anymore. The door was blown outward. Angela, can you walk any further? I am dead on my feet. Well, we either camp out here, make some room in the gazebo, or we camp inside. I vote for inside. I concur. Fine. Wait, before you go in. Lux providentia regat modo. Your own little ball of fire. How convenient. Want to explain that to me? You wouldn't believe me. We can use it to find our way through the abbey, but we must be quick. It drains me. Look at the size of that fireplace. Hang on a sec. Hattie, where are you going? He's picking up a... fireplace poker? What? I left the chainsaw at the pharmacy. Oh my. This poor monk. Something ripped open his chest. Those things are everywhere. My god, where the hell are we? Same place we've always been. No more than five hours from Savannah. I'm pretty sure cannibals aren't indigenous to the United States. You said you believe what you can see. Well, bub? You're seeing it. True enough, Sister Angela. But there's something greater at work here. This is more than food storage. Look here. This monk was ripped apart, but most of him is still here. And look at this guy. His arm and two legs are attached, but his other arm is over... there. Is it a point to this macabre inventory, Hattie? If you're hunting for food, why leave so much of it behind? You said they demoralized the survivors. This is different. This is killing for the sake of the kill. And there's only one animal that does that. Maybe they want their food fresh. True. Perhaps they don't have the refrigeration capacity to hold them all. But then why so much carnage? Why dismember them? There's almost anger. Malice. It's like they wanted the monks to know they're little more than meat bags. Hattie, these are human beings you are talking about. Show a little respect. Put down that arm. The scary thing is that something about this is vaguely familiar. It's like when you almost know the title of the song or trivia answer. Really, Harry? Is something finally coming back to you? What was that? It came from in there. Shh! Behind this door. Harry, please think before you strike. Be the man you want to be. Don't move! No, please don't hurt me. Who the hell are you? I'm Brother Andrew, the counselor of this monastery. Sister Tasha, please shine that fireball on Brother Andy. <gasps> You're not looking so hot, brother. Three days ago, the abominations attacked us. I managed to get in here, but not before this. Brother Andrew pulled up the sleeve of his robe, revealing a bite mark which covered most of his forearm. Lines of green and blue followed his veins up an arm that was whiter than human flesh. His face was ashen gray, and red-blue patches of skin covered his head. Bulbous eyes added to his pitiful appearance. 
When he spoke, malformed teeth appeared behind dry and cracked lips. We tried to stop them, seal their prison. Somehow they knew we were coming and struck first. Their prison? You know where these mole men, abominations, are kept? Below. Below here? Under the monastery? How long have you known? I've known since I arrived here, decades ago. We always had them under control, but last year something happened. You've known that these monsters lived in your basement for decades and didn't do anything to stop them? Come closer. You're one of the pagans from that heretical convent. We prefer naturalists. Tomato, tomato. You are damned in the eyes of God. Not from where I'm standing, brother. Why did you keep the cannibals here? Did you try to get help for them? We were able to control them. Keep... You. You've been bitten. Stop! Get away from me! Don't you see? This is your punishment for being a pagan. And what about you? You certainly don't look like one of God's chosen. I am no longer. My sin was pride, and if I accept my penance, I will get into heaven. Pride of what, brother? <sighs> brother, I need your help. My help? For what? My final passage. I can't perform last rites. The vicar gave all of us last rites when the first of the abominations broke free. We were to set the traps, but they... The abominations overwhelmed us too quickly. There were hundreds of them. I need you to end my life for me. We will do no such thing. I did not ask you, witch. I asked him. Sister Tasha isn't a witch. That light she projects doesn't come from the father. And despite your polytheistic pagan principles, child, you either belong to him or to the Dark One. There is no in-between. If you're so anxious to die, why not just kill yourself? Because suicide is a sin. How are you planning to hold the abominations? Explosives. We were going to destroy the Abbey and close this tributary to hell. Tributary to hell? A bit melodramatic, don't you think? Think of the Earth like a tennis ball, scuffed and worn down in some places. This is one of those worn places where the hell minions can get through. Assuming one believes in hell... That assumption is unnecessary. Facts are facts. Call them demons. Call them aliens. Call them the Elder Gods. Call them Bill. It doesn't make a difference. The fact of the matter is that things get through. The Spaniards who settled this place called it El Lugar del Infierno. Roughly, the place of hell. This abbey was one of the original missions and has been here since the 1500s. The Spanish used the levels above the sub-cellar to house their prisoners. The gods from below spoke of dreams and night terrors. Some even said they heard the sounds of unholy monsters. Several of the prisoners said they dreamt of squid-like demons that consumed human flesh. Every man who went down there came back with hair as white as their eyes. In the 1700s, a heretic was convicted of crimes against God and man. He and his followers were sentenced to 25 years in the catacombs below. A monk who went down to deliver rations was attacked, his body ripped open. The search party found his organs suspended on sticks and bones. The prisoners had filleted what was left of the monk and were eating his flesh. The rescue squad, appalled at such atrocities, killed the prisoners in a bloody battle that took the lives of most of the rescue party. The surviving monks didn't realize they had been possessed by some pathogen that would turn them into cannibals. These abominations escaped the walls of the monastery and made it to the town where they killed the men and children to use as food. They brought the women back for breeding. I'm going to be sick. It's going to be rough for her when she eats her first piece of human flesh. She won't be eating any human flesh. She's a vegetarian. Why did the infected monks come back once they had escaped? A special order of Jesuits came out and purified the situation. 
Some of the infected monks willingly returned and agreed to stay in the catacombs. Later, the Jesuits turned the abbey over to my order. About ten years ago, the vicar received a truck-sized delivery from the Jesuits. Special explosives. There are enough explosives under this building to leave a crater laced with holy oil and salt 150 feet deep. The catacombs go on almost forever, but it would be enough to seal them in. Unfortunately, the remote detonator is now with the abominations. They took the vicar and the remote below. So he might still be alive. I don't think so. Brother Andrew, what's wrong? Brother Andrew! He's molting like a snake. Harry, please. Kill me! Don't let me die as one of them! Stand still, brother. Harry, no! All things serve the Lord. This too will serve. I can't. I'm sorry, Brother Andrew. I'll block the door so you can't get out. Tasha, Angela, go. I'll be right behind you. Honey, I don't... Tasha, just go. Please, trust me. Oh, I hate when you say that. Fine. Remember, Harry, be the man you want to be. Brother Andrew, I'm sorry about this. Wait, there's more. I didn't want to say it in front of the pagans. I saw your tattoo. There is another who wears the same. Where is Brother Andrew? Splitting headache. Couldn't leave the room. We've got to find the way down the stairs. Harry, wait. Tasha, I left Brother Andrew to whatever Providence has planned for him. Scout's honor. Good. Is any of this, I don't know, triggering anything? A little. Brother Andrew told me something. He didn't want to say it in front of you or Angela. What? He said that I was bewitched, and that there was another like me, and a whole lot of other stuff that didn't make a bit of sense. You are close to who you are. Sooner than later, you will remember everything. What about the Gorms? That was pretty cool. You throwing those blue bolts of fire like some crazy sorcerers, me hacking and slashing like a knight of yore. Plus, you did look hot in that completely impractical fighting outfit. Metal Bikini Leia has nothing. I did look good. No, this is crazy. You're the champion. I am just an enchanted human. Tasha, I could really use your help. Harry, you left me for a minute. Where did you go? It was my own little Matrix moment. Does Metal Bikini... I found it! Really, guys? Here? Now? Harry and I froze when Angela turned the corner. We were standing close. I with my hand on Harry's chest, almost flat over his heart. One of Harry's hands rested on my hip, the other still holding the fire poker. Angela stopped when she saw us. Angela's red hair, which had been thick and lush minutes ago, was thinner, her scalp visible in the front. The freckles on Angela's face had all but vanished, and I thought her incisors seemed larger and sharper. Why are you both staring at me? Why won't you help me? After having trapped the Archangel Gabriella in a circle of holy oil, I demanded she tell me where Harry was. Even after I told Gabriella I loved Harry, she refused. You are jealous, aren't you? Of what do I have to be jealous? You, Dr. Strega? Harry is immortal, or as close to it as a human will ever be. You, Dr. Strega, are mortal. I could have Harry Strange for a thousand lifetimes. You could never. But Harry isn't interested in a thousand lifetimes. He loves his humanity. He loves his free will. He may be your favorite, Gabriella, but I don't believe you are his. What's it been? Eighty-something years since you chose him to be your champion? How many girlfriends has he had since then? 
Isn't that a question you should be asking yourself, Dr. Strega? In 82 years, Angel, have you ever been one of those girlfriends? Whoa! Nicely played, Strega. Enough of this. Dr. Strega, I think it's time you learned with whom you are dealing. From behind Gabriella's back came gigantic wings, each wing large enough to cover several large men's bodies. The wings started to flap, slowly at first, then they picked up speed. What is happening? The large oak desk began to surrender to the wind, slowly moving across the floor. Cower before the power of the Archangel Gabriella. The holy fire which had been standing strong against the strength of the wind began to get caught in the powerful blowing. Within moments, the holy fire was extinguished. But that's impossible! You cannot! That's the fire of the holy oil! All things are possible for an Archangel of the Lord, including the ability to see within the human heart. Gabriella flew from within the confines of the circle. She landed in front of me and placed powerful hands on my chest. Get off me! You may feel a little tingle. Get your hands off me! What's going on? I'm blind, remember? What's going on? Get off me! Stop! Is this a chick fight? Great. Finally some angel on girl action and I'm blind and can't see it. It's not too late for you to be my sacrifice, Finny. Now, Dr. Strega, let's see what your heart reveals. Your words are true, Dr. Strega. You do love Harry Strange. Stronger than any before, and in such a short time. Now? Will... you... tell me where? No, but I will tell him where to find you. Your love for Harry will be your undoing. Don't believe that feeling of security, because the second you do, it will be too late. Why can't you angels ever just say what you mean? These riddles and vague inferences don't really help us. She's gone, Carmen. How do you know that? Because I can see again. I opened my eyes and looked around. Finney was right. Gabriella was gone and the furniture was back in place. The circle I had used to imprison her had a red slash running diagonally through it. Well, that was useless. You owe me, Strega. Shut up, Finney! Lieutenant Johnston, not really a good time. Dr. Carmen Strega, I have a warrant for your arrest. What? Are you kidding me? Well, uh, I'll just be moving along then. Have a nice night. Not so fast. Why don't you come along? I have some questions for... What the hell is wrong with your ears? Why do they look like that? Um, nothing. Why do you smell like that? This says the origin of these charges is Vatican City? It's an Interpol warrant, Carmen. I have nothing to do with it. The Pope put out a warrant for my arrest. A man wearing a black cassock with a blood-red sash entered. He towered over the officers. His face was wrinkled and scarred and his bald head was as white as a cadaver. A waxed black mustache sat over his thin lips. Not the Pope, Dr. Strega. The Vicar of the Order of the Dagger and the Cross. We have reason to believe you killed Brother Harry Strange. What? I didn't kill Harry. Tell them, Johnson! We have nothing to officially say, though personally I doubt that... Frankly, Lieutenant, what you or your department have to say is as relevant as it is worthless. The Order has conducted its own investigation, and that's the evidence from which I operate. The Order. Please. You're nothing short of murderers and thugs in priests' robes. Harry has had nothing to do with you in years. If anything has happened to him, it was because he finished cleaning up one of your messes. Again. What do you mean, one of their messes? Nothing. You wouldn't believe me. 
You see, Lieutenant? She knows more than she told you. Arrest her. You can't arrest me. I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm sorry, Carmen. Officer Smith? No! I want a lawyer! You can have a lawyer when we get to Rome. I'll fight the extradition. Dr. Strega, let's go downtown. Tomorrow morning we'll get a lawyer. I plan to take custody of the prisoner tonight. Well, Brother Serdeo, your plans are as irrelevant as they are worthless. I operate under the rule of U.S. law, and that's what I intend to follow. Rest assured, officer. Your superiors will hear about this. It's Lieutenant. And make sure you spell my name right. I strongly protest, and I demand that Dr. Strega be turned over to me. We'll see what the Night Falls DA has to say about this. Good night, brother. Do not screw this up, Johnson. You haven't any idea what's at stake. Thank you, Lieutenant. Shut up, Strega. You and Strange... Hey, you with the pointy ears. Take another step towards that door and I'll have you shot. Lieutenant Johnson, please. You can't seriously be planning to let those barbarians take me. Quite frankly, Dr. Strega, if it were up to me, I'd send Brother Serdeo back to the Vatican with one of my boots up his ass. But it's not up to me. His warrant is valid, and we have an extradition agreement with Italy. Are you kidding me? Let's head over to the station. <sighs> Lace, you are so fine. I bet you say that to all the girls. Yeah, but I never meant it before. <laughs> You're so bad. I've never met anyone like you. You've got that right. Now, kiss me. Mm. Uh. Uh. Wow. If you can make me feel this way with just a kiss. Mm. What would you do to feel other things that I can do? Anything. Anything? Whatever you want. Anything? Anything. Done. Kiss me again. Done. Shut up and kiss me. What the? You bit me! What's wrong with your mouth? You have wings. What the hell are you? It's not the wings you have to worry about, pretty boy. It's the tail. What the? You stabbed me! Oh. Hmm, not quite the piercing you had in mind, was it? Lace, what have you done? Leather, how, how did you find me? Followed your scent. Lash said we were to stay at the apartment. Lash is an old tit. Without Lilith giving orders, we are free to follow our instincts. Don't you smell it, Leather? It's everywhere. It practically sings to us. Help me! Lash is our Bula. Lilith is our Domina. We have our orders. How many tonight? A few pretties. But I didn't kill any of them. Just took a taste. We need to go back. Now. Lash doesn't want us drawing any attention to ourselves. Why? What are these hairless apes going to do? Not the apes. Lace, there is an archangel nearby. We need to go. <laughs> so there is. Fine. <coughs> Shut up, ape. <coughs> How mature. Take his head and hands and let's go. This is crazy, Lieutenant Johnson. What does it prove? Carmen, this is your stack. Born and raised in Night Falls. Brother went missing when you were 16. Never found. Presumed. I know all that, Lieutenant Johnson. Can I go? Your partner, however. There isn't any record of Harry Strange being born in Night Falls. Or in this state, for that matter. It's a commuter society, Lieutenant. I can't help that. And yet I've found his name on police reports dating back to the 70s. My predecessor, Lieutenant Alvin West, who retired five or six years ago, 
listed Harry as one of his confidential informants in 1975. How is that possible? Are you sure it's the same man? Yeah, it's not like Harry is some immortal human or anything. Shut up, Finny! I'm still investigating, but there is something very odd about Strange, and I plan to get to the bottom of it. Harry Strange Episode 203, You May Feel a Little Tingle, was written and directed by Tony Serechia and produced by Brian Ahern. All material is copyrighted by Tony Serechia and used with his permission. Featured in tonight's cast were Tish Parmalee, Jackie Costello, Kellen Stennett, Sylvia Galan, Jason Tyler, Ray Saltrelli, Dennis Coburn, Brian Troxell, Craig Johnston, and Julie Ivey. Harry's opening theme music was written and performed by Lance Hogan and is copyrighted by Lance Hogan and used with his permission. Incidental music and character themes were written and performed by Ryan Lassard and are copyrighted by Ryan Lassard and used with his permission. Contact Ryan at rlassardmusic at gmail.com. Incidental music was written and performed by Kevin McLeod and is copyrighted by Kevin McLeod and used with his permission. Visit incompetech.com for more of Kevin's music. To keep up with the latest news and information on everyone's favorite private investigator, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash harrystrangeradio. Send your questions, comments, and suggestions to producer at harrystrange.com. For the Harry Strange Radio Drama, I'm Joanne Pruden. Good night. <laughs>